I'm Lee Christie from Coppers. This is Steve Adams from PTG. Uh, PTG are the service treaters who use the fire performance chemicals that we're going to talk about today. Uh, as David has said, we're going to talk about something a little bit different uh, from what you've seen so far. This is about the post-production uh, application of a fire retardant to a product which is not going for resale back on the market. This is specifically for one job. It could be a very small job or a large job, but it's not for resale. It could be delivered to a building site. Uh, so it's just a slightly different take on uh, what you've heard so far. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as you heard, I'm Steve from PTG Treatments. We get the inquiries from architects, from, from specifiers, from contractors, or direct from, from customers, and, and many of my customers are, are here in the room today. Uh, at this point, we, 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 we enter a discussion with our customers um, or, or, the, or the specifier to try and ascertain what it, uh, exactly it is that they're looking for. And at, at that stage, we try to give advice, try to point them in the right direction. Questions I specifically get asked for is, uh, what, what standard do I need? How should this be treated? How should it be applied? And, and whilst we can answer some of those questions, uh, as I say, I don't think it's, it's ourselves that should be indicating the standard to which the, 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 the substrate requires treatment. In this example, we're going to use it today as we're going to say it's some 20 millimeter large to be used as an external cladding. <coughs> Following that inquiry, so it's 20 millimeter large to be used outside, we would check with coppers to see if we have a, 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 a classification report, a standard that covers that, that exact substrate. In this instance, we do got a full classification for that, and the classification is uh, Euroclass B, a smoke propagation, S1, and a droplet propagation, D0. You've already heard from speakers uh, this morning as to how those, those uh, classifications are, are derived, but I don't think it'll do us any harm just to reiterate exactly how we achieve those particular uh, classifications. A little bit of an explanation. The first letter you'll see, so we've seen today some C's and B's and things like that. The first letter denotes the Euroclass. So in this particular example, it's Euroclass B. Uh, occasionally, there is a little subscript next to it, which denotes different uses. Uh, if it's for cladding, then there is no subscript. Uh, more often than not, in the business we do, there is none. Uh, the next one is the smoke um, classification. S1 is actually the best smoke you can get. That means the least smoke production. Uh, S3 is the worst. And then the D at the end is the flaming droplets. Um, again, D0 is the best, i.e. the least amount of flaming droplets. Goes right up to D2, which is more flaming droplets. Uh, we use multiple test houses to get these. Uh, in the UK, uh, like most people so far, we use uh, Exova Warrington Fire. We also use <coughs> the BRE. Uh, in Europe, we use Risa in Sweden. And in France, we use the FCBA. The timber is prepared, it has to be the right moisture content, the treatments are carried out according to the required parameters, whatever they are. Uh, it's usually independently witnessed by the test house. Uh, whoever we're going to choose will send someone down to witness it. Uh, the parameters, such as the loading or the cycle details and the solution strength and the concentrations are all measured. We weigh the timber much like the ones that do before and after every single board, so we've got complete traceability of everything that's going into that test. It's all recorded. The treated timber and all this supporting information is then sent to the chosen test house where they condition it, they'll construct the test rig. More often than not, we go for the worst case scenario, which will include an air gap, a combustible substrate behind it, uh, and vertical and horizontal joints as well. And that's where they'll do the testing. Again, apologies for the repetition. Um, the test house then test to, to these standards, which consists of a minimum of three of the SBIs, the single burning item test you've seen mentioned several times. SFI, or the ignition test, is a minimum of six of those. And we're looking at the fire growth rate, the total heat release, the smoke growth rate, lateral spread of flame, because this is uh, the early stage of the fire, total smoke production, and the flame in droplets. And from all of that, the test house then interprets this data in line with EN 13501, Part one to give you final classification. Okay, so if we just cast our minds back, we've said that we have full certification for the example. Um, which we're lucky enough to uh, win the order, and the timber arrives at our treatment site, which is down at Tilbury, uh, and ready for treatment. 
right from the start, we follow a, uh, a, a flow chart of how we handle each particular order. Uh, I don't intend to go through it step by step, but I just hope that the, 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 the diagram there just gives you some indication as, as to the way each of the separate orders are handled. So at every step of the operation, we, we, we check and we recheck. We check it's, it's suitable for, for treatment. We check the timber. The timber's treated. We check after the treatment. The timber's dried. We check after it's dried. And uh, produce all the paperwork that's necessary. Stephen very eloquently mentioned earlier on that the treatment certificate is the very minimum that we would expect to, uh, to send out with our, with our goods. Um, I would fully reiterate what Stephen said and say that every single order that we, we commission, a treatment certificate um, uh, accompanies the goods when they're collected and all the information that is required on that certificate is included. And we hold all the paperwork necessary to, to back up what is stated on the certificate. The, 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 the solution strength, the charge, the cycle, the species, the classification, the absorption, everything is held uh, within our own records to, to, to fully support what is stated on the, uh, on the treatment certificate. I don't know what the next slide is. Okay, so we're just, uh, again, going to talk you very, very quickly through the the timber treatment process, which surprisingly is exactly the same as arches, but uh, we can go through them. So the timber's uh, transferred into the treatment vessel, a vacuum's pulled to withdraw the air from the vessel. Fire X in this case, solution fills the vessel. Pressure's applied to force the, the, the chemical uh, deep within the timber. A vacuum's pulled, and the treated timber comes out. Only one slight difference from the, from the example that Arch gave, sorry, Lonza gave, is that at the end of the uh, uh, process, the, till, the timber is, um, first of all, kilned to dry it, to remove some of the excess liquid that we've added part of our process. But in this example, we're talking about an exterior fire treatment, and that requires an additional, an additional uh, curing cycle. It's that curing that sets the timber, sets the chemical within the timber and renders it what's known as a leach-resistant product. So when the, the cladding, in this case, is placed uh, externally on the, on the elevation of a building, it's not eroded by wind-driven rain. So it's fully exterior, leach-resistant, to be used in weather unprotected situations. Um, as part of our, our uh, uh, process, uh, I believe uh, Lonza have auto-treater, yeah. coppers have work net. Um, I guess they're both about the same, but Lee's just going to talk you very quickly through what, what the information is held within this system. Yeah, so very similar. They all do the same job. They're automated systems to ensure that every single piece of wood in that, in that set or in that cube or in that charge is, is done properly. So every single piece of uh, information is, is monitored from the, the vacuum times and pressures, the, the actual pressure times, the uptakes, the solutions, the weights, the solution strength. So there's an absolute complete traceability of every single pack of timber that goes through that charge. It's given a unique number which at any point during their life can be traced back so we can look in the event of any issues in the future or any questions in the future. We can refer it straight back to a database which holds all of the details about this particular charge and it gives Steve all of the information he needs to produce the documents which he's about to talk to you. Okay, so the timber's all, all done, ready, completed. At the very minimum, we supply every, every order that goes to site with a treatment certificate detailing the customer's order number, a description of the, of the goods, the euro class to which the timber's treated to, and some charge information. So as Lee mentioned earlier, we can trace back when the, when the, when the timber was treated, right back down to the individual charge and uh, the retentions or cycles that we used. Steve says, though, that because this is going to be sent to site, it's going to be erected on a building hopefully relatively quickly. Most of the information is held back in, in PGD's offices because it will just get lost on a building site. There's absolutely no point in having it there. It's all retained back in the office. It's not on the market for sale, don't forget. A little bit of confusion that uh, PTG have caused in the marketplace in so much as we brand all our chemicals under the Centrin brand. Um, I would reiterate that 
Centrin FRX is Coppers FireX. They are one and the same. Uh, we are currently um, involved in a, in a complete retesting of all our products. Um, so so the, the, the name on the classification reports is changed from um, Coppers Exterior Fire X to Centrin FRX. And I, I do apologize if that has caused a little bit of confusion within the marketplace. But you can see we, we, we use Coppers Fire X. Um, we hold classification reports for many different species and thickness. And, and again, it's, it's, it's important here to reiterate that, that it is specific to a species. It is specific to a thickness. So the, the classification or test report for western red cedar can't be cross-red to use larch. It can't be cross-red to use the example earlier on of European or American white oak. Every single species needs to be tested, needs to have its own classification report. And, and in the climate of today, uh, it would be a, a very a dangerous thing to cross-read information and, and treat timber that you don't hold a classification report for. You'll also notice that the, uh, that the, um, the, the, the chemical, it's, uh, it's a WPA approved chemical and uh, completed within their documentation. Yeah, I think um, with the severity and the, you know, the spotlight on fire trips at the moment, Someone should only specify something that is approved independently, like somebody like the WPA. Um, it's, it's too dangerous not to. Our other internal chemical, so this is the equivalent of the uh, Lonza Drycon chemical, is we brand it as Centrin FRI. It uses Copper's Fire Pro. Again, once again, we have certification for many thicknesses and, and uh, different species. You'll notice there one additional approval. It's approval for use on London Underground as I understand that the Lonza product is as well. Uh, they, they, they will have a different approval number to ourselves. But again, they're very, very similar chemicals, very similar, in, in, uh, similar end uses. And uh, again, our product is approved by the, the WPA. Once the timber leaves, leaves our premises or leaves our customers' premises, we, we've got no real control over what, what happens to it. And uh, I'm quite sure that quite a lot of timber goes to site and then somebody thinks, well, I'm not sure I like that natural effect of the timber. I want to put a coating on it. I'm going to paint it black or red or white or whatever color. Um, as Lonza mentioned earlier, once a coating is applied to a, to a fire-treated uh, substrate, in essence, you, you have nullified that, uh, that, that, that certification. Uh, the certification only covers for the untreated timber. And as I say, once it's been treated or coated with something, you've lost that certification in essence. So we have our own dedicated coating system that's been tested and approved, and that's known as Centrin Chroma Coat. So I, I, would, I would sort of ask is, if, if any of your customers do want it coated, then you ascertain that information at the start, and that can be applied after the fire treatment along with all the full certification. So in order that, that when it gets to site, your customers benefit from, from certified and, and properly treated fire-treated timber. Thank you very much. No, no problem. problem at all.